Welcome back to our Hatch Embroidery Getting Started series. Today you will learn all about the dockers in Hatch, my threads, design overview, the resequence docker, and object properties. You will see how easy they are to use and they're so very handy. Just select what you want to change and make your changes in the dockers. Let's get started. Last but not least, let's look at dockers in the software. You have three dockers on the side, and then you have a fourth docker that's called Object Properties. It's a very important docker too. Dockers contain key information about the design, such as colors, stitch type, settings, and sewing order. Dockers can be open and closed as you like. You can float them by dragging the caption bar or double-clicking on it. That is, if you use multiple monitors, you want to be able to open them in your second monitor and keep them open as you're working. It's quite nice, but a word of caution, if you unplug your monitors, you will not have access to your dockers. They will still be on the second monitor. So be sure before you close your software or unplug your second monitor that you redock your dockers. Let's look at the dockers. We will start with my threads. They will not always be listed in this order. They rotate. So yours may show up with my threads on the top and uh, where mine right now is on the bottom. I'm going to click to open my threads. I also could click on the threads icon at the bottom and it would open the my threads docker. The my threads docker is like your thread box. It's where you store all your different brands of threads. I'm going to do a whole video just on thread docker, so you'll learn a lot more about that a little later. But right now, the important thing that you need to know is that this is your thread box. This is where you will go to pick out the threads that you want to assign in your design palette for you to be able to use. Click on this arrow to hide it, and I'm going to open the resequence docker. Now the resequence docker shows the stitching order, and you can actually view the stitching order in two ways. You can view it by color. These are the colors, the sewing order of the colors that it will stitch out. Or I can click on objects, and it will view it by the objects within the design. It will show you the type of object that it is. This is a sewing order of the objects. If you want to see the colors, you just click on the colors at the top. And then there's one more docker that I want to show you. This is the overview design. This will give you an overview of the design. Notice that I've zoomed in and I cannot see all of my design in the main window. But I can see all of my design in the overview. Now I'm going to zoom in very close. Notice that it highlights with this white box around the part of the design that I'm viewing, but I can still see my overall design. Let's say I like this zoom value and I want to move it to another part of the design. I can just move that box down and then it will view that piece of the design. It's quite handy for you to use when you're viewing and looking at your design even when you're editing your design. So we've talked about the three dockers that's docked on the side. I'm going to double click on that design and I'm going to open up my object properties. The object properties contains all the information about the design. If you have an object selected, it will show the settings for that particular object in the object properties. This is also where you will change the settings for that object. Before we go, I want to give you a couple of tips. If you hover your mouse over a tool, you will see that it has a tool tip that will fly out for many of the tools. It will give you a hint on what you can use that particular tool for. It also tells you the name of the tool. And then in the brackets there, you will see the shortcut key for it. Down at the bottom, you see it says press F1 for more help. If I take my mouse, hover over a icon or a tool, and then I press F1 on my keyboard, it will open up online documentation to that 
particular subject. Be sure to check out the online documentation because there's lots of information there about each one of the things that we've talked about today and you will be able to gain a better understanding of your software. So that's it. Hatch is so easy once you see how to work with it and how to understand what the different sections contain. In the following videos, we will talk more about each of these sections so you can gain a better understanding of your software. It does take time to learn any software. I encourage you to start by going through the videos as we have them listed. This will take you step by step through the basic features that you will use most often. Before you know it, you'll be up and running. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you check out our other videos in the Hatch Getting Started series.